Janice Rule. Actress, singer, and dancer turned psychoanalyst, Dr. Mary Janice Rule will always be referred to as being one of a kind. The tawny-haired beauty had an active career on stage, screen, and television, alongside some of the biggest names in Hollywood before using her actor's insights to get a PhD in psychoanalytics. Here are seven amazing facts about Janice Rule. But before we dive into the video, make sure you subscribe to the channel and leave a comment below saying, I subscribed, and we'll do our best to personally reply to your comment. Number seven, Rule began dancing at a young age. Janice Rule was born on October 15th, 1931, in Norwood, Ohio, to parents who were of Irish origin. She began dancing at the Chez Paris, a Chicago nightclub at the age of 15. This paid for her ballet lessons, which helped her get into Broadway. She was a dancer in the 1949 Broadway production of Miss Liberty and Great to be Alive in 1950. Number six, Rule's off-screen feud with Joan Crawford. Rule studied acting at the Chicago Professional School and made her screen debut with an uncredited role in 14 hours in 1951. She was signed to a contract with Warner Brothers and was given the role of a rebellious college student in Vincent Sherman's Goodbye My Fancy in 1951. The film was based on Faye Kanan's play, but suffered by having its political and sexual aspects softened for the screen. The film is best known for the onset feud that developed between Rule and well-known star Joan Crawford. Crawford publicly spoke about the feud and wrote about it in her 1962 autobiography. In it, she writes, the cast included a young girl named Janice Rule, whose personality definitely clashed with mine. She continues by referring to Rule as non-professional and states that she told Rule to enjoy her time on set because she would not have a long future in acting. Rule later commented on the tense atmosphere on the set, saying that it caused her to make mistakes, take after take. Crawford later wrote an apology to Rule for treating her badly on set. Number five, Rule leaves Warner Brothers. Rule was pictured on the cover of Life magazine on January 8th 1951, in a feature entitled, A Rising Young Star. However, Warner Brothers dropped their new actress after only two films. Her second film was in 1951 in Starlift, which was an all-star morale booster about Hollywood's work entertaining the Korean War troops. Rule's role was a movie star who falls in love with an airman. In the film, her dancing skills are displayed as she has two duets with co-star Gene Nelson. Number four, Rule shines on stage and screen. After starring in two MGM movies, Hollywood for Sinner in 1952 and Rogue's March in 1953, Rule returned to the stage where she was part of the original Broadway cast of William Ng's Picnic. Rule played Madge Owens, a restless small town beauty who is played by Kim Novak in the film version. Ralph Meeker plays the drifter with whom she falls in love with, and Paul Newman as her executive boyfriend. Meeker and Rule became good friends and dated for a short while, and it was at his request that she was cast opposite him in the 1956 film, A Woman's Devotion, where she plays the wife of a disturbed war veteran. In 1957, she starred in Abner Biberman's Western Gun for a Coward, where she played a heroine torn between two brothers, who were played by Fred McMurray and Jeffrey Hunter. She also played a snooty fiancé of a publisher played by James Stewart, who falls in love with a witch played by Kim Novak in the 1958 film Bell, Book, and Candle. Number three rules finest performances. Her finest performance came from her roles in the theater. In 1959, she was praised for her performance as a neurotic beauty ruining several lives in Michael V. Gazzo's drama, The Night Circus. It was here that she met her third husband, Ben Gazzo. Rule starred in a man-hating beatnik in 1960 in a screen version of Jack Kurovic's novel, The Subterraneans. This was the film that caused Joan Crawford to graciously admit her error and apologize to Rule. In 1962, she wrote, On board a ship last summer, I sat watching the subterraneans, absolutely rapt over the performance of an actress who dances brilliantly 
who has a flair for drama, for comedy. Who is this girl? She's fantastic, I said. Well, the girl was Janice Rule. I've since seen her on TV, and I can only add superlatives. Miss Rule, my apologies. I think you're going to be with us a long, long time. Rule had another personal triumph in the 1961 musical The Happiest Girl in the World. Aristophanes, Lysistrata, with the music of Offenbach and lyrics by E.Y. Harbour. Here she played Diana, goddess of the moon, who inspires Lysistrata with the idea that women must refuse their favors until men agree to keep the peace. It is still recalled affectionately by theatergoers as a show-stopping duet, which she shares with her uncle Pluto, who is played by Cyril Richard. Their performance was praised by critics and actors alike. Walter Kerr from the New York Herald Tribune wrote, Cyril Richard and Janice Rule could have danced all night. They linked arms, lifted their ears for a beat, and took off to the lightest of Offenbach, as though they'd quite forgotten which palace they were supposed to have come from. Rule was also referred to by other critics as being personal magic and a beautiful, bewitching dancer and an all-around musical comedy player. Number 2. Rule's Love Life Rule was briefly married in the 1950s to television and film writer N. Richard Nash. She then had a brief engagement to Farley Granger in 1956, which was described as the briefest engagement in show business. They appeared in the Broadway play The Carefree Tree in 1955. Next followed a relationship with Ralph Meeker, who had played Hal in Picnic. Rule's second marriage was to writer Robert Thom in 1956. The two had a daughter, Kate, before divorcing in 1961. Her last marriage was in 1961 to Ben Gazzara. The two had a daughter, Elizabeth, before their divorce in 1982. Number 1. Rule became interested in psychoanalysis. During the 1960s, Rule became interested in psychoanalysis. She began her studies in 1973 and specialized in treating her fellow actors. She received her Ph.D. from Southern California Psychoanalytic Institute in Los Angeles ten years later. Rule practiced in New York and Los Angeles and continued to act occasionally until her death on October 17, 2003, from a cerebral hemorrhage. The actress, singer, and dancer Janice Rule was a bombshell beauty who had an active career on stage, screen, and television before she put her actor's insights to use and got her PhD in psychoanalysis. She was brains and beauty and won the love and admiration of many people. This is why Janice Rule will forever be referred to as being one of a kind. Have you seen any of Janice Rule's performances in films or on stage? Do you know any other actors who studied psychoanalysis? Let us know in the comment section below. Also, make sure to check out the next video in the series.